I don't know if I can do a better job at chanting than that. That's damn good. Hi, my name is Michael Render. Killer Mike. I'm professionally known as Killer Mike, absolutely. Um, I am from a family that's out of Tuskegee, Alabama. We're the Blackmans and we're the Mackies. And I'd just like to say that as proud as I am to be a part of the legacy of Alabama and being a part of the family, I'm deeply ashamed of what this company is doing to Alabamians. I'm ashamed that we still live in a country where we celebrate someone, and I'm, I, I qualify them on what they call the South Negro rich. I got enough money to last me my lifetime. I'm trying to have some left over for my kids, but I'm gonna have a lot of fun while I'm here. Jeff Bezos is beyond white folks rich. <laughs> Jeff Bezos is what they called in the old South, the planner class. And what was the planner class? The planner class was a class of people who could afford to own plantations, and then they would use people that they had labeled as poor white people who were living this gypsy lives, going through the South working. They came up with a name for those poor white folks. They called them crackers. And they decided to distinguish those poor white people from the planter class, and they used them in the fields. And there was another people that they had brought over from Africa that they called niggers. And they worked both of these classes of peoples relentlessly in drudging heat in the South for the profit of the planter class. That planter class became enormously wealthy. They did trade that enriched not only the South and the Confederacy, but before and after that, this union. So this country was built, as the Vice President of the Confederacy said, on the cornerstone of not only slavery, which he indicated, but an indentured servitude and a suppressive workplace that kept poor people poor by keeping them separated, keeping them humiliated, and keeping them down. Now, 120 years later, here I stand, a product of the legacy of Alabama, a product of a woman who grew up a sharecropper, my grandmother, later went on to become a nurse and start a family in Atlanta, and the exact conditions that she described to me when working on a field in Tuskegee, Alabama, unrelenting heat, the inability to go use the bathroom or go use the lavatory in a decent time and be coming and come back and have a full day's work account to you. All these things that a woman who worked in a sharecropping field told me are being said by workers here today. Michael, it is unrelentingly hot. We do not have access to air conditioning. If we get into work one minute late, they take an hour of our time off. And in that room is not just people who look like me. In that room is not just people who are black or brown or melanated. In that room is the diaspora that is Alabama. It is the tapestry that is America. It is black, white, woman, man, every other race and ethnic group. And we should be ashamed of ourselves for allowing companies to come in and pillage our people. We should be ashamed of ourselves for allowing our need and want for a package to get there in two days to cause a woman with an injured arm to be told by a company, no matter your injury, you can exercise it all. So just think about when your child hurt themselves on a football field or a basketball field. Just think about the asshole coach that says, walk it off. Think about being promised better insurance when you come to work for a company and at the end of the better insurance, you go to the doctor and you still get a bill. Think about a woman having a heart attack and falling out behind you because she's so hot and tired. Think about people that saying it takes me 10 minutes to walk to my car after work. The richest man in the world can't even give us golf carts. We have to walk to our car and then we sit in our car and we're so fatigued and we're so tired that we just sit there. Think about an environment where that, you walk out to the latest rap song because they tell you that's hip. They might play some Cardi B, might play some Run the Jewels, might play some New Little Baby as they've worked you like a slave. They might leave a sugary snack out for you to boost your metabolism enough to get through packing packages every nine seconds. I can't pick my nose in nine seconds. And you expected people to pick us something in nine seconds because we simply need it. So I'm gonna tell you, everyone that works here, I'm gonna say absolutely you should vote yes for that union. Because what the union does, 
What the union does is give you an organized seat at the table. It allows you to plot, plan, strategize, organize, and mobilize. It allows you to say that pay in Alabama should be more than 16 bucks in a warehouse. There's no way we should be seeing below 20 bucks. Don't tell me you want to make an economic investment in my community, and then you come pay me fast food wages. You don't want an economic investment. You want to use me like an indentured servant to enrich the richest man in the world. Now, I've heard stories about other rich men. That was a rich man in Africa. His name was Mansa Musa. He had a kingdom called Mali. He was so rich when he took his pilgrimage to Mecca, he gave away gold all along. Messed up the world trade for about seven, eight years. But that is the heart of a truly rich man. The heart of a man who's worth $150 billion, who will not provide air conditioning, who will not provide an hour paid break, who penalizes people for being a minute late, that is an evil, evil heart. That is a heart filled with greed and contempt for the worker. So on the behalf of the worker, I'm going to surpass their vote because I want their vote to go through. But if it doesn't, I won't be ordering from Amazon again. If that vote does not go through, if these conditions do not improve, then I'll just be walking on out to the store with my mask on. But what I won't do is by being a customer, enable the richest man and the fastest growing company to use slave labor any long. These people have been treated as badly as my grandmother when she sharecropped in this same state. These people have been denied the basic laboratory rights that you would allow any child going to school in an eight-hour day. These people, in the name of the convenience of shit getting dropped at our door, are being used and abused as though they're tools and their life can be thrown away because it's peak season. So what I'm going to tell the public, past the union, past Mr. Bezos, is if they won't treat their people right, who are we if we stand on the side of evil just to get a package to our door two days? So I want people after today to take a firm look in the mirror and look at your fellow states people, look at your fellow Americans, and I want you to say this to yourself. Them having a master, good or evil, is not worth me getting a package in two days at my door. I'm just going to better plan and order two weeks earlier. But what I'm no longer going to do is support any evil because it's more convenient for me at the expense of these beautiful, wonderful, working their ass off people here in Bessemer, Alabama. I want to tell you, I love you. I want to tell you I respect you. And I'm going to digress right now because there's a great person that I missed. He has been working on this protracted struggle on the behalf of the workers long before I arrived on Earth. And I'll be working on this long after he leaves us. And hopefully that's no time soon. I'd like to introduce you guys to Senator from Vermont. Should have been our president and hopefully will be. Senator Bernard Sanders, please come up and speak to the people today, Sanders.